to uh, listen to what we have to say. Uh, now, before I actually uh, dive into uh, you know the, the main story of the day about how organizations can uh, improve their customer experiences, uh, I'd like to start off with a little personal story here. Um, so this was around the time when I had just moved on from buying physical books. So I had started buying uh, e-books and I would download them from Amazon and I would use the, the Kindle app uh, on my laptop to read them. So I remember one time when I was sort of stuck in my car and I was uh, waiting for my wife, I had some time to kill and I decided to open up the Kindle app on my mobile phone. Now, as soon as I opened the app, something amazing happened. The app took me to the exact same book and the exact same page that I'd been reading on my laptop the week before. And I was amazed. I was I was completely blown away by this, uh, you know, by this little piece of magic that had just happened in front of me. But the thing is, today when this happens. I am not so blown away anymore. I am not so amazed. In fact, I have come to expect it. And I expect this not only of my, uh, of my technology apps, but I expect this from my bank. I expect this from my, uh, from my retail store. I expect this from my airlines. So this uh, really, ladies and gentlemen, is a story about rising customer expectations. And the thing with customer expectations is that once they rise, they never come down again. So this is the kind of world we find ourselves in today, where we see that customer expectations are continuously rising. Customers are comparing their experiences across industries. Uh, Competition is increasing because of, uh, digital disruption is lowering the barriers to entry for different industries. Uh, and at the same time, hyper adoption of newer and newer experiences by, by customers is actually reducing customer loyalty. So it's a pretty difficult time uh, for companies today, uh, very challenging uh, times that companies find themselves today in. And at Forrester, we believe that a laser sharp focus on customer experience and customer obsession is your only bet to win, serve, and retain customers. In other words, what we are saying is that CX matters to you because of this. CX means money. We do a lot of research in this area uh, as an organization and in our research we find that better customer experience almost always correlates to higher revenue growth and this is true across most industries and this is true across the globe. For example, if we had to uh, look at the BFSI industry, so let's look at banking for example in Germany. So we have a CX leader there which is ING Deba and we have a CX laggard which is a commerce bank in Germany and we find that uh, just look at the difference in their annual growth rates uh, over four years. It's seven and a half percent versus a negative one and a half percent. Look at the insurance sector uh, in the US uh, and, and you will see the same story repeat there. Uh, you have a six and a half percent versus a negative two and a half for the uh, CX laggard. Look at what's happening in the airline industry. Uh, again, in the US, you'll see uh, CX Darling there, which is Southwest, uh, which is so popular and well loved by its customers, versus United, uh, uh, which is, you know, there's so many horror stories abound about uh, United Airlines. Just look at the difference in the growth rates for domestic revenue, uh, global revenue, and revenue passenger miles. And again, we see the same story repeating, for example, in retail, where we have uh, somebody like Amazon completely blowing Walmart uh, out of the water. So CX is great uh, to help you uh, grow faster in terms of revenue. The other thing it helps you do is also reduce your costs. For example, if your products are better aligned with customers' needs, then uh, you're going to have a lesser need to advertise or market them. 
if your products or services have fewer problems, then naturally that means uh, you're going to have fewer support calls. And um, if you can provide better digital experiences, that means you can actually go out and leverage uh, self-service tools better. And if you resolve problems for the first time around when uh, customers are calling you in, uh, that means you're going to have fewer repeat calls. All in all, what this means is that uh, good customer experience is good business. But we bandy around this term customer experience. Everybody uses it. Uh, there's so much lip service to the term all over the world today. But what does it actually mean? Because we find that uh, in the same company and sometimes even in the same team, people don't have the same understanding of what customer experience actually is. It's a little bit like that story of, of the blind men uh, when they go and visit the elephant and everybody sort of looks at, feels a different part of the elephant and walks away with a different idea of that elephant. So we find that customer experience is, is very similar. So it always helps to have a common understanding of what customer experience actually means. So at Forrester, the way we define it is customer experience is how customers perceive their interactions with your company. So there's really two keywords here if you look. The first is perceived. So customer experience is a perception. And it's a perception in the minds of your customers. And this perception is, uh, is formed on the basis of the sum of all the interactions they have with your company. So this could be your excuse me, your uh, marketing messages, this could be your emails to them, this could be uh, what your call center people are saying and how they're behaving, this, is, uh, this could be even how your uh, bills or uh, 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 receipts are designed, what your uh, staff uh, at the branch is saying, all of these things come together to form uh, uh, an idea in the, in the minds of your customers and that is customer experience for uh, for customers. But this is not just some fluffy concept. This is hard quantifiable stuff. And the way we actually make this quantifiable is we break down customer experience. We sort of deconstruct it into its two uh, elements. The first is the quality of the customer experience and the second is the loyalty effects that it has. So if you had to break down the uh, elements of uh, the quality of customer experience, there's, there's three parts there. So the first is effectiveness. Are customers actually getting value from the experience that you're providing them? Is your product or service actually doing the thing that it is supposed to do? The second is ease. Are customers getting that value from your product or service without much difficulty? And the last one is emotion. How do you make your customers feel after they interact with you, after they use your product or service? And of these three, our research shows that emotion is by far the largest driver of the quality of customer experience as well as the largest driver of loyalty. Talking a little bit about the, the types of loyalty we look at when we uh, consider customer experience. So the first one is retention loyalty. So retention loyalty is whether or not your customers are going to retain their existing business with you. The next is enrichment loyalty. This is whether or not your customers are going to actually increase their business with you. And the last one is advocacy loyalty, whether they're actually going to go out and tell other people about the positive uh, experiences they uh, had with you. So this is how we sort of deconstruct customer experience. Uh, and this is how we also measure customer experience. So we use our own uh, methodology called the CX index. Now I'm sure a lot of you who follow customer experience are aware of the term NPS. It's a pretty popular way of measuring, NPA, uh, of measuring customer experience. So the CX index is sort of similar to NPS, but it is really NPS on steroids because it not only asks about advocacy, which is the mainstay of NPS, what it does is it asks questions about all these six areas that I just spoke about. It asks questions about the quality of the experience, whether the experience was effective, whether it was easy, uh, and what is the emotion it left uh, the customers with, and also the kind of loyalty effects it had in terms of retention, enrichment, and advocacy. So the CX index, uh, sort of takes inputs 
on all these six areas and it gives out a score which measures more fully what uh, customer experience uh, uh, means for, for that company. So this is how we sort of break down and measure customer experience. <clears throat> so now that we have that out of the way, I'll talk a little bit about customer experience in India. Now, we speak to a lot of companies uh, about what they're doing with customer experience and what plans they have. And one strand sort of really stands out. In, in it's, it's common across all the conversations we have. And that is one of ambition. We find that companies in India are very ambitious about the kind of uh, experience they want to provide their customers. For example, in uh, one particular survey we ran, we found that half of the respondents said that they want to provide the best CX in their industry. In fact, one third of them said that they wanted to provide the best CX across industries. So what this means is that if you're a bank, you're saying that you want to provide the best CX not only amongst banks, but also amongst retailers, amongst uh, airlines, amongst hospitality uh, firms, and so on and so forth. So this is the kind of ambitions that, uh, that companies have with respect to the experiences they uh, want to provide. In, an in another survey we found that almost 70% respondents said that customer experience was going to be uh, a high or critical priority for them going forward. But that's really just one half of the story, right? Because as we understood earlier on, that customer experience is about what the customer perceives. So it does not really matter what companies are saying about the kind of experiences they want to provide their customers. We want to understand what customers are saying about the customer experience they receive from companies in India. Now to figure this out, what we did is we actually went out and measured the CX in India. So we used our own uh, methodology called the CX index uh, uh, and we went out and surveyed more than 18,000 consumers of 72 brands across eight industries and we used uh, the CX index and the CX index uh, gave out a score for each of these 72 brands and once we had a, store for, a score for these brands we went out and we bucketed them into excellent, good, okay and so on and so forth. So for example if a brand had a score more than 80 uh, it would be bucketed into the excellent category. A little bit about the way companies performed. What we found was that in 2016, 75% of Indian firms that we surveyed uh, were actually providing customer experience that was just about okay. 24% were providing CX that was good, but not a single company was providing CX that was excellent. Now, just go back and compare this with the ambitions that uh, Indian firms are saying they have with respect to the experiences they want to provide. And, and you realize the kind of uh, hard work that companies need to do to actually deliver the experiences they want to provide the customers. Now, we did a little further uh, study of this, and what we did was we averaged out the brand scores across each industry just to figure out which industry is doing better than others and which is doing worse. And this is the graph that, uh, that you see on your uh, screens right now. We found that uh, PC manufacturers and banks and credit card providers uh, are actually providing the most superior customer experiences in the country today. The bottom of this list is uh, unfortunately brought up by uh, auto and home insurance providers and surprisingly uh, digital only retailers. Now this is not very dissimilar to what we see in other regions where we run this uh, exercise. So we use the CX index to measure uh, countrywide uh, CX in uh, eight other countries and we find very similar results. Almost always we see that for example financial firms are, are right at the top providing the best experiences more than uh, other industries. Now I spoke to you a little bit earlier about the importance of emotions. And if we look at the emotion scores of, of brands in India, 
we find that Indian brands are not delivering enough positive emotions. For example, banks are only uh, are providing eight positive emotions for every one negative one. Insurance is providing seven uh, positive emotions to every one negative uh, uh, one and uh, the same goes with retail. Now to just put this in some perspective, uh, I'll show you some scores from the US. So we have USAA which is a bank in the US. They are able to provide 43 positive emotions to every one negative one. And Home Shopping Network which is again a retailer in the US is able to provide 36 positive emotions to every one negative one. So clearly we have a long way to go in terms of improving the experiences we provide our customers. So how do we uh, sort of bridge this gap? Because obviously there is a gap. We want to provide the best CX. We have that ambition. Uh, we, uh, we, we was sort of want to deliver better experiences. <clears throat> but the way things stand today is that we are not able to do that. We've seen the, the CX results of, of different uh, industries uh, some time back. So how do we br bridge this gap? Now to answer that question, <clears throat> I'm actually going to take some Olympic inspiration. So when Pini Sindhu, she won the Olympic silver and her coach was asked, what is it that you did to actually get there? And this is what Mr. Mr. Gopichand had to say. He said there are some constants that you need to follow to excel at the international level which means there are some things and some practices you need to constantly uh, uh, do well so that you can excel. In the same way, what we did at Forrester is we went out and looked at the CX leaders around the globe to figure out what, did, what is it that they do well, what are their practices, what are they doing differently which allows them to consistently deliver superior customer experiences. And this is what we found we found that CX leaders constantly excel at these six competencies. The first is customer understanding, prioritization, design, delivery, measurement, and culture. I'm going to go through each of these very quickly to give you an understanding of what each of these means. Uh, the first one is customer understanding. So CX leaders around the world they understand that their customers are in the market not for quarter-inch drills but for quarter-inch holes. And they get to this understanding by obviously looking at qualitative feedback and CSAT surveys and looking at, uh, uh, at the CX measurement data and looking at uh, all, sorts, all sorts of analytical data. But this only tells them the what and the where and the how and the when. CX leaders go beyond this to understand the why and they do this by doing things like ethnographic research and exploratory research. For example, Barclays Africa, they have been in that continent for over a hundred years and they, and they realized that they were just serving 1% of the population there and they decided to change that and to do that they went out and um, they engaged the services of a design company called Dublin uh, now Dublin is is now the is now part of Deloitte, and what these guys did is that they sent out their their researchers in the field, and these guys spent over six weeks in the largest slums of Kenya to figure out what financial inclusion meant for these people. So they spent a lot of time with them understanding them, talking to them, living with them to figure out what money means for them. So this is the kind of research that <clears throat> it allows you to understand why people uh, behave the way they do and uh, uh, why they have certain needs. The next thing that CX leaders do well is prioritization. Now like all of us, um, CX leaders have the same constraints in terms of resources. It's not like they have extra resources. But the thing that they do well is that they go out and identify who are their most important customer groups and what are the most ex important touch points uh, and what are the most critical experiences for those customers that they must get right. 
So once they have their prioritized list, they focus their limited resources onto these important customers and onto the uh, important experiences that they identify. What they don't do is this, right? You've probably seen this in, in any malls that you've visited. You see this is whack-a-mole where uh, one mole comes up and you're supposed to whack it down and as soon as another one comes up, you change direction and you uh, uh, try to attack that. This is not what CX leaders do. They have a very structured approach to, to customer experience and improving uh, um, uh, CX for their customers. The, the next sort of thing that CX leaders focus on and do well is design. Now, CX leaders understand that design is not just what something looks like. Right? There's this misconception that, oh, design means, uh, you know, what something looks like. But CX leaders understand that it is beyond that. Design is how something works. So you have a company like Capital One, which is a financial institution in the U.S. They go out and acquire a design firm. And you have technology companies like Samsung and IBM who are recruiting designers in the thousands. And you have a company like PepsiCo, which is publicly claiming that design is in fact the way forward for it. So these CX leaders, they focus relentlessly on design and design thinking and human-centered design principles, which allows them to actually move from process to story. So they move from process mapping to mapping the journey of the customer. For example, here you can see uh, this example is showing how company has mapped out uh, the emotional experience at different touch points for a broadband uh, purchaser. Right? So, so just see how beautifully they've sort of mapped out the uh, different emotions and just imagine the kind of insights that you can get from an exercise like this. The other thing uh, that CX leaders do with respect to design is prototyping. Right? This is this is a central tenet of human-centered design. So here, this is an example of a uh, uh, hotel lobby of Holiday Inn. So Holiday Inn was trying to come up with a new format of hotel lobby, uh, and they actually made this prototype entirely out of foam. And then they let their customers and their employees walk in and out and give them feedback. And this is such a cheap and easy way of, of getting feedback right at the start of what works, what, what is positioned well, what can be improved. So this is another thing that CX leaders do with respect to design. The next competency that they build is delivery. Now that they've sort of figured out their customers, what they want, they've figured out uh, what is the experience they want to provide them, so the next thing is delivery. So being good at delivery means CX leaders they go and define activities for each role that is in line with the vision and design of the customer experience that they have in mind. And they train their employees for delivering better customer experience with the right soft skills. And they give them the right tools to deliver better CX, right, which is checklists, guidelines, scripts, and also the right kind of technology. And, and Nitin will cover uh, that a little bit later in his presentation. Because technology is such a, um, such a core part of delivering better CX today. And the last thing the uh, CX leaders do is they check whether the delivered CX was actually in line with the CX vision or not. The next competency that CX leaders excel at is measurement. Now, all companies try to measure uh, CX in one way or the other. They either use their NPS or CSAT or CX index or a combination of these. But what CX leaders do differently is that they never do this in silos. This is a very coordinated activity. They have a central measurement framework that they keep going to, <coughs> going back to. And all the things that they're measuring uh, flow back into this so that the company as a whole understands what is the direction it needs to move in. So it's very coordinated. And these companies, they're never fixated on the numbers. So they understand that not even the best metric can actually make up for a bad strategy. The last thing, but certainly not the least, what CX leaders excel at is culture. 
CX leaders understand that culture is what your employees are doing when you're not in the room. So they try to focus relentlessly on building the right culture. So for example, you have an ING bank in the US when it was trying to come up with a new banking format, it realized <clears throat> that while you can teach someone to be a banker, you can't actually teach them to like people. So what it did is for this new format, it decided to hire hospitality types and not bankers. So it changed its hiring process, it changed its uh, interview process and interview questions and all of that just so that they could get in the right kind of people. So these were the six competencies that our research shows that CX leaders excel at to provide better exper experiences. But what does this mean for you? So I want to sort of leave you with a couple of things that you can take away from this. So number four on my list is Assess your CX management maturity, which means assess where you stand in terms of each of these six competencies. Figure out what you are doing in terms of customer understanding and what you're not. Figure out who your most important customers are. Figure out uh, design and design principles and uh, make sure you sort of stay ahead of the curve there. Uh, and so, uh, so on and so forth for delivery, for measurement and for culture figure out what is missing and build out the right CX muscles that you need. The next thing that I'd like to, to leave with is um, you must focus on emotion. I cannot stress enough on the importance of emotion for, uh, for, cust for, for companies. For example, SDFC Life, they came up with Memories for Life which, which clearly sort of laid out that it's, it's not just the money and assets that you're leaving behind for your, for your loved ones. It's also your memories and your advice for them. And look at what Bharti AXA is now doing with the grief support program, again, which is such a good way to connect emotionally with customers because they've understood that uh, when people come to them uh, to claim uh, life insurance uh, policies, they naturally have gone through this life-altering event and they've uh, lost somebody they loved in the family, so they have a grief support program. So this is much more than marketing messages. We have a lot of emotion tied to uh, our advertisements and the way we market and sell to people, but these things are <clears throat> actually products and services that connect emotionally. And look at what Matterside is doing. So Matterside is an is, is a, uh, analytics company, and what Matterside does is it helps you match the personality of of a call center agent with the personality of the customer calling in. So it has it has data on both of these things and it tries to match the personality. So if you're if you're naturally aggressive, then you get routed to a, uh, an agent who is who who can handle such a person. So imagine the kind of things you can do with uh, with technology like that. So you must focus on on emotion. The second last thing that I want to leave you with is that you must coordinate your CX efforts across the company because we find this so often in our conversations with companies in India is that all sorts of CX work is happening in silos. One arm does not know what the other arm is doing. Uh, I remember an incident where, where we were talking to customer support of, of a certain uh, organization and uh, they did not know what marketing was doing where, where we actually went and told them that, you know, do you know uh, marketing is running so-and-so CX initiative and they had no clue. And there are umpteen number of instances uh, where this happens. So you must uh, synchronize your CX efforts, you must move in step, which means marketing must talk to operations, must talk to uh, customer, uh, customer support. Right, so all, all these functions, everybody responsible for the customer uh, must actually move in step. The last thing that I'm going to leave you with is this, that you've got to start with the customer experience and work backwards to the technology. Now technology is, is, is not a culprit. I mean, there are so many amazing things you can do with technology today, but you must not get carried away with the technology. Never put technology first. You have to start with the customer, start with the customer experience and work backwards to the technology. And this last bit of advice comes uh, not from me but from this gentleman. 
with that I'm going to uh, hand over to Nitin so you just heard from me uh, about customer experience why it's important and how the things you can do uh, within the organization to improve customer experience Nitin is uh, going to take over and uh, talk a little bit about the key challenges uh, and trends in uh, uh, customer experience with respect to technology over to you Nitin Thanks, Amit. Uh, that was really insightful. Uh, before I start, just want to ensure everyone is able to hear me fine. So, uh, Amit, uh, if you are still unmuted, can you just confirm that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're good. Perfect, perfect. Well, thanks, everyone. Uh, my name is Nitin Dade. I am Director for Customer Experience Solutions at Logmein in India. While Amit covered some very insightful trends and example of how customer experience is paramount for large enterprises or small enterprises to be top of their game. In next 15 to minutes or so, what I want to focus is focus on how technology plays uh, the most vital role in, in realizing these experiences. So once you, you define your customer experience strategy and approach, uh, how technology becomes the most important piece for you to stitch it all together. So uh, what I will be really covering is some key trends uh, which are around mobile and millennials, uh, how they basically uh, uh, define the customer experience strategy and then uh, what are some of the opportunities and, and challenges around these uh, which, which you can focus on. But before we start, uh, for those of you who are unfamiliar with Logmein, um, very briefly we were built upon the fundamental belief that uh, possibility increases with connectivity. Logmein as a company uh, was founded in 2003 uh, in Budapest. Uh, we then um, moved to US. Uh, currently our headquarters in Boston. We are listed on NASDAQ, a billion dollar enterprise, uh, uh, one of the top 10 SaaS companies in the world. Uh, specifically, uh, while we have various solutions specifically from our customer engagement and support business, which comprises of tools like Bold Chat, Rescue, Zively, which is an IoT platform, Lens, etc. Uh, we basically empower companies to reimagine their customer engagement and support across digital channels, devices, and media for a highly personalized and intelligent interaction. This really drives business outcomes through higher customer satisfaction and an increased agent productivity. So let's start. So we are in, in middle of a renaissance. A new way of thinking about how to deliver great customer experiences is becoming an integral part to any idea, whether it's a startup or it's a, it's a Fortune 100 company. Uh, and in fact, artificial intelligence is increase, increasingly becoming part of these experiences. Let's take an example of driverless cars. As you all know, right, companies like Google, Tesla, Uber, they're all in a race to put autonomous cars on the road and completely reimagine the way driving experience is going to be. But again, it won't happen uh, overnight. There is still so much to be done to make it a great, great and flawless experience, especially in countries like India. But again, uh, the idea is not that everything is about, uh, about removing humans from the experience entirely. While well, technology uh, automation is, is uh, uh, already delivering these great experiences without removing humans from the picture totally. As an example, in, in case of cars again, we have active parking assistance which helps drivers find a parking spot and park it even in tough, tight situations. Similarly, lane detection uh, uh, features in, in high-end cars ensure that the driver is driving safely on a highway. So approaches like this can deliver huge benefits to customers and agents, even in a contact center environment. And in fact, my remaining part of the presentation is going to focus on how customer experiences are being defined and delivered in the new contact centers. Well, consumer adoption of mobile devices and proliferation, proliferation of channels have also changed our way of engaging and supporting customers. On one hand, we have businesses who have traditionally interacted with, with their customers over the phone, but also they have added channels over time. Initially, if they were just doing phone support, today they have included channels like email, website, chat, social, but again, they really never optimize these channels as part of a larger engagement strategy. As a result, what really has happened is they have these disparate system which gives poor visibility into a customer experience. We also have businesses like Lutron, which was traditionally a manufacturer of light dimmers, 
for home appliances. So if if some of you know Lutron, they they produce these uh, 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 regulate fan regulator like uh, controls for controlling home lighting systems. Now in the earlier world, they were following the traditional model of selling their products to distributors and then retailers, and then it finally would get delivered to to end consumers. And there was really no communication between the end consumer and and Lutron. But again, in the connected world, when they launched their smart home product range, which can be controlled through an app, now they need to rethink the entire approach and how they are delivering customer experiences entirely. Because what this is really the first time now they are engaging directly with the customers and gathering valuable insights on, on their solutions in terms of usage, what the customers are doing with the products, uh, what challenges they are facing, uh, not just from usage, but even beyond that from, from maintenance and service perspective. So while these solutions are widely different, these scenarios are widely different, uh, what really never changes, changes the ex ex expectation from customers to have a flawless experience. And again, to create these experiences, just adding, just applying brute force to add channels is something that will never work because there are again nuances to each channel. And when they, they, have, they work together, it just become much more complex. So creating compelling customer experience as you engage and support your customers is both an art and a science and really requires a thoughtful and elegant approach if you ho hope to earn not just revenue and wallet share, but on a long-term basis earn customer loyalty and their advocacy. And honestly, smart businesses today know that great customer experience win every single time. 89% of businesses today compete based on customer experience it becomes even more important when cons consumer is on mobile device. And that's really w w the trend I want to speak about. Mobile devices have given consumers instant access to price comparisons, product information, and peer reviews. As a result, consumers expect brands to immediately address their needs with real-time relevance. The heightened sense of urgency everyone has today, you and I including, uh, uh, is really forcing customers to offer on the go information and support. And so businesses needs to be thoughtful and mindful of the mobile experience. It's vital for customer acquisition, retention, and long-term revenue growth. Our data shows that 53% of customers today use mobile device to research products or services before making a purchase. I'm sure many of you can associate this, this with your own experiences. If you're buying a product, you do go online and try and see what's out there, what customers, what, what other buyers are saying about this product and whatever else you can find. And 44% of these mobile devices, uh, of these customers use mobile devices to even go uh, and make online transactions. I have, I've, I'm buying so many products on my smartphone today. And then again, uh, many of them are even going further, nearly 28% and seeking support, technical assistance when they actually need it. I will give an example of, again, some of the apps which we commonly use, whether you take uh, on an online commerce app or whether you take uh, a, a cab booking app. Many of these apps don't even allow information for you to reach to, to the contact center via phone or email. The only way you can communicate and, and seek assistance is through the app online. So that's a, that is what is happening, and that's why mobile is becoming so dominant. Today, more customers call from their smartphones nearly 58% than landline. And they are using their mobile device for just more than calls. In fact, 83% use um, customers use mobile applications to contact businesses, which is up nearly 30% in last few years. Also mobile websites is, is the number of mobile websites is also increasing. If you are a startup or an enterprise and you're coming up with a new version of your website, the first focus is going to be mobile interfaces, then the web part comes. So you have really got to deliver a great mobile experience as part of your strategy. And because also for 85% of consumers are unlikely to do business with you after a bad mobile experience. You need to know in fact, the cause of what typically creates a bad mobile experience. As an example, a customer unable to find relevant, inter relevant information on your website or app plays a huge role. 72% have abandoned a mobile experience because contact details were too difficult to find. And 53% look for FAQs when they need to get a question answered. 
and again many of them are saying that while they have the FAQs they are still unable to get the answers they need so this covers the mobile trend I think the next important trend I want to speak about is around Millennials so let's shift gears and talk a little bit on Millennials so Millennials as a, as a first generation of digital natives has a strong affinity for technology especially smartphones and messaging apps they help shape how they engage with businesses as consumers millennials believe that what they do in their personal lives should even extend to commercial life they extend they expect interactions they expect interactions to seamlessly move often in real time from one device or channel to the next without losing the context of the conversation they are very frustrated when businesses don't provide this connectivity tissue uh, and unlike many of many from the past generations uh, millennials have least brand loyalty in this in this this uh, word and time if if you have one bad experience millennials will go and find another service they can consume and this is not just millennials as consumers millennials as agents are equally important their expectations is going unfulfilled in the contact center environment if you look at the contact center environment uh, you will find that the most of the of the staff there is are millennials and they demand technology for their job that mirrors the digital technology they use in their personal life they are looking for solutions that are fast and allow them to communicate and work quickly so what happens when this is not done so as an example if you look at the right side of the slide it talks about the cost of an agent turnover the industry standard for agent turnover is around 14% that means that in in a contact center environment 14% of the staff get changed every single year and the right side of the slide talks about the cost which gets involved so for a level 1 support engineer the cost is on an average $2300 per year which goes up to $4400 for a level 3 engineer and if you just multiply these numbers with the 14% staff turnover rate I'm sure it, it's the number nobody, no one of us would like to have in our enterprise. So what we focus so far on the key trends and one should consider as part of their customer experience strategy. Now let's talk about some of the opportunities and challenges these trends create for businesses when, when especially it comes to de delivering a differentiated experience. What we see uh, are three major uh, opportunities which one should focus on. Uh, this includes personalization which is capturing insights and preferences to personalize the experience and leverage real time relevant data to swiftly and efficiently address customer needs. Also automation, which is to provide intelligent and automated interaction to address routine inquiries and satisfy consumers who prefer self-service. And again, all of us know that self-service is on the rise. We all prefer that because you don't have to wait. And then lastly, optimization, which is, which makes it really possible to escalate the automated interaction to a human agent at the same time the human agent should get a full context of what has happened in the past now let's sp spend some time on each of these aspects so when we talk about personalization the ability to support customers on their mobile device and through their preferred channel is an opportunity for you to personalize and defer your service compared to your competition consumer wants a brand that really gets them and while consumers such as millions millennials may not be brand loyal they are very responsive to personalized offers and promotions again this is a world where promotions offers coupons are on the rise we all see them everywhere and if you just make these offers and coupons very custom or very personalized as a business you will see how they differ and how they create unique experiences what is also happening is that the data which comes from these different mobile apps is 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 exponentially increasing that's where we have the new roles like data scientists data engineers coming in which were not probably there 15 years back or 10 years back now what really as as uh, as a technology solution you should be able to do is create those personalized experiences based on data which is being gathered from from the usage of the of the consumer every single day with that let's understand how automation plays an important role in creating these great customer experiences automation can be used can be counterproductive if it's not used well with the personalization aspect of the of the strategy 
today we have chatbots smart agents virtual assistants neural networks various different technologies at the same time the tool and the technology should be able to figure out how to provide answers in the most intelligent and relevant fashion and they should should be able to do this predictively based on behavior based on what the customer is buying in what is in the cart what is being said so far and this should improve over time there has to be a learning feedback going in in the technology in the solution which improves all this and lastly in case automation fails the technology should be able to provide a seamless transition to live support where the issues can still be resolved otherwise what happens is inadequate self service offerings leave customers stranded in automation limbo i have some statistics on 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 the slide here but basically what it takes what it talks about is lot of companies jump on the automation bandwagon at the same time they somewhere miss the the fact that automation cannot or may not 100% be able to solve an issue and how it should smooth some a smooth uh, seamlessly transition into into a service mode and lastly optimization sorry just some issue with the slide here yeah and lastly automate automate uh, optimization is also very critical to better cu support customer businesses have expanded the channels they offer but simply adding multiple channels in a disconnected approach makes it difficult for an agent to follow the customer journey and it's very frustrating for the customer to even get a response there there are aspects such as an issue should be resolved if possible in the first channel itself if not different channels can be used to resolve the issue where the context is not missed and also the consumer or the customer should be able to seamlessly move from one right channel to another without an effort so finally what i would like everyone to walk away today from this webinar is with a few questions to ponder the notion of adding more channels is not sustainable and does not provide a consistent experience if it's not if it's not consistent if you have multiple channels is there a way you can consolidate these channels into one single technology solution also it's important to be thoughtful in in the application of ai do you want to use ai just for automation or to also empower your agents or to achieve best of both the worlds and lastly how to give agents quick access to customer history or data to personalize the interaction to be able for them to faster resolve an issue or improve overall customer retention with that i would like to pass the session back to the moderator for the q and a